Hello everyone, welcome, welcome, welcome to the Family Cafe Conference for 2020. As you already know, most of the workshops are done virtually and I never imagined in my 32 years of marriage that I will be doing a workshop from my man cave. Many years of help raising children, waiting outside the bathroom to get in and for to get in the bathroom, knocking on the door, little feet paddling at your knees. But now our children are grown. I am no longer dad, D-A-D. -D. Now I am A-T-M to them. Welcome to our workshop. I'm Bob Streeter. This is Team Streeter Seminars and Services. I'm going to be talking to you today about 26 healthy relationship and marriage tips. Maybe you're in a relationship or maybe you're like me, a seasoned veteran of marriage, whatever that may be. <laughs> I'm still trying to, after 32 years of marriage, I'm still trying to figure out the toilet seat thing. So if you can help me out in that area, send me an email. Should it be up? Should it be down? We have separate bathrooms now, so I don't have to worry about it that much. But in the longevity of our marriage, that was a big issue. Uh, and it came out after the wedding night when I went in the bathroom and I came back. And my wife went in the restroom, the bathroom, and the toilet stool was not in the proper position. And that's how it all started. <laughs> so in 32 years, by the grace of God, I've, I'm so thankful to uh, to be married. Uh, 32 years straight to the same wife. Uh, we have four children. And particularly, I want to thank all the organizers and management staff of Family Cafe. My wife and I, we usually do this workshop together as a couple, but I was asked specifically to talk to the men uh, in reference to the topic of 26 healthy marriage and relationship tips. So that's why I think it fi I find it very appropriately. I could have shot this in anywhere in our home, but I wanted to shoot it here in my man cave. You may not see it, but this is my man cave. I have all the essentials. Snacks that my wife knows that I'm hiding it somewhere because she don't like me eating a lot of cookies and my favorite barbecue potato chips. I have it hidden because when you're in the man cave, you have certain secret components that she doesn't know where I have my snacks as well as my television here. So, and it does happen. Sometimes I may say or do things or something that may uh, upset her. I'm sent to my man cave, and in my man cave, I do have a flat screen TV. So, if you find yourself sometimes in a jam in your marriage, or you're going through your relationship with your significant one, there's always room at my man cave. Just send me an email, and we'll work it out, okay? <laughs> with that said, we're going to be talking about from A to Z. I'm going to use each letter of the alphabet that you're familiar with uh, based on the publication here. I'll just show it up to the camera here. 26 Healthy Marriage and Relationship Habits. I call it tips, but habits is good to form in good habits. Uh, practical approach from A to Z and language that you can understand, nothing complicated. Um, not only that I'm a business owner, my wife and I have Team Street of Seminars and Services, but we have been speaking uh, for a quite good time on the area of relationships. Not that our marriage has been so perfect. I was watching the TV on some talk show. I was taking a view of it, kind of give you a hint of the talk show. But anyway, they were talking about marriage and relationship. But they had this mature couple. They have been married 40 years. And the question was posed to this mature couple who have been married over 40 years. And the commentator and the host asked them a question. And the question was, 
Have you ever had an argument in your 40 years of marriage? And the wife said first, no, 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 no. And then the husband, after 40 years of marriage, he went along with his wife and said, no, no, no. And I'm at home saying, you lying, you lying. Stop the lying. Tell the truth. Because marriage is tough business. I always say marriage is for grown folks. My way is not the right, right way all the time. And my wife's way is always right most of the time. How about that? <laughs> and you have to give and take. And particularly as parents of a child with special needs, there are challenges. And there's a lot of things that we have to go over and kind of help each one as we go through the process of raising our children and keeping our marriage together, keeping our love together. You all like this statue here? You guys need to go and get a room. No, you can stay here for a while. But anyway, <laughs> that's how I married when you first get married. It's, oh, so much romance. I love you. I love you. I love you. Then all of a sudden, these children come into the world. I always say when you have children, that's God's way of telling you you had enough sleep. And as you're in the process of raising your children, you kind of lose that luster and romance that you first started in your marriage. It happens to all of us. I'm just being practical. Things happen. You're working. Children, you're going back and forth to different meetings. You engage with your children. I was so happy when my children graduated from high school because I needed to walk across that stage because I did most of their homework. Just want to let the record be straight on that. I should have been walking across that stage. But I wasn't. I was in the audience with tears in my eyes and so thankful to be able to see our children graduate from high school and start a new life of staying in our home until they're in their 40s. <laughs> just joking. But let's get to the point right away. Just so wanted, you want to keep that luster and love and romance in your marriage. And it is possible. It is possible. It's a lot of give and take. Some of the things that I'm going to share with you, you may not agree. We disagree, but we can not be disagreeable. If you don't believe it, uh, some things that happen, or maybe I touch on some points that you really say, man, I need some improvement there. It's okay. You're in the man cave now. We can talk as men. We can talk as men. You know, we can talk this thing out called marriage. We can talk with one another, okay? We can let down our guards a little bit. And let's just talk about this thing called marriage, all right? Rule one, if you're a significant other, your wife is there in the room right now watching this. So kindly let her know. It's guys getting together. We're getting together now. Okay? So kindly say, I'm going to watch Bob and listen to Bob. Say it in love. Say it in grace. So we'll be able to talk man things about this thing called marriage. Fair enough? Okay, okay. All right, so we're ready now. We set the stage, we're ready. Let's, let's jump into it right now. Once again, A to Z. We're going to start. We have a certain amount of time. We're going to try to get through this. And some of you have already probably seen the presentation with my wife and I. But I'm, I'm geared specifically for men in marriage. Men in marriage. M&Ms. They're good. M&Ms. I like how they have the different colors of the M&Ms. m and M, man and marriage, okay? A, big word, appreciate. Now, for those of you who don't have the publication, you can email me and I can get a copy of the publication. I'm gonna read a lot from the publication, okay? And the beauty of a virtual workshop, you can freeze at a certain point and go back and listen to it again and hopefully you can pick up some tips to be able to nurture and, and to preserve your marriage and your relationship. Okay? Fair enough. A, appreciate. 
Learn to appreciate each other and creatively find ways to let each other know just how much you care. Tell your wife one thing, showing them that you want to go to another level. You want to appreciate her. Fellas, we in the man cave now. Let me share, share a tip with you, okay? Now, I want you to do this. Now, when you do this, make sure that you have 45 minutes to an hour block of time with nothing to do, okay? This is part of appreciation. My wife always illustrated. I'm filling in your cup all the time. You got to fill my cup in all the time. I'm filling your cup in all the time. You got to fill in my cup all the time. I understand. I get it. This is the phase, phrase that pays. Are you ready? Now, when you say this to your wife, make sure that you have at least 30 to 45 minute block. Because you know how men operate. Get to the point. You know, like that old show with Dragnet. Dragnet. I just want the facts. Okay, get to the facts. And we are so gracious to have wives that communicate every detail that may happen in a certain day before getting to a specific point. Okay? <laughs> this is a phrase that plays. That plays. It does. It pays dividends, okay? But you got to block out your time when you ask this to your wife. And this is part of appreciation. This is what you say. I love you, baby. Tell me, how was your day today? After you say that, don't say anything else. That's it. How was your day? Today, 15 minutes may go by, 20 minutes may go by, 45 minutes may go by, one hour, continuing, and at the end, you say one word, wow, wow, you're so amazing. And after she finished speaking, you go outside, run 10 miles, do 100 jumping jacks. <laughs> to, you have accomplished a big goal. You show appreciation. Don't wait for the holidays to do something special for your Valentine. Make each day count and be grateful for your spouse and family doing things to help around the house hold it guys okay okay i'm following you bob but you're saying okay you wanted me to do things around the house yes yes you know we gotta chip in it's not 1950s this is 2020 <laughs> women out there working just like we're out there working and if you're fortunate enough that your wife is home assisting and raising the children, and sometimes roles are reverse, and you have to humble yourself and go with the flow. And particularly in this time that we have now, in this time of COVID and, and economic unsurety, there may be a chance or maybe a situation where the script may be flipped. And what I mean by that is that you, as a man, may be at home and your wife out. But at the end of the day, you're working together as a team. It's not my money, not your money. It's ours. Okay? Okay. B. We got it. Appreciation. B. We're moving along here. B. B stands for bounce off ideas. This was a big, big lesson I had to learn early in my marriage. We're talking man to man. I had to learn this early in my marriage. Because I would go out and make a decision or buy something or do something. I thought it was for the greater good. And 
it came down with, my wife had no clue. You know, what sparks a better communication, new ideas, concept, and a fresh point of view? And I, and I confess, I didn't want her point of view. I wanted that particular television. The television was calling my name. There was space in the house for this particular television. For you, it may be a car. You're just walking. You happen to land at a car dealership. You happen to run into nice people that suggest for you to get this car and this is really your car. That car has your name on it. And the people were so kind the next thing you know, you are setting down and say, well, this is not going to hurt too much. I do need a new car. We need a new car. And I can make that payment. And the thing was that maybe your wife didn't even know that you were going out to get a new car. So you have to bounce off ideas because it's part of teamwork. And include your significant other in the decision making. Trust me, it will help out in the long run when you start to bounce off ideas. And particularly sometimes, you know how we work, men. We want that, as I said, that 30-second commercial. And sometimes in the process of communication, that 30-second commercial turns into a 30-minute program without commercials. So you have to sit, listen, disciple. Uh, you know where you are. You Both of you work together, and you move forward. Because at the end of the day, what? You want the trophy. <laughs> you want the trophy. <laughs> C. Accept the consequences for your actions and be able to deal with it in a responsible way, especially if you know it's your bad. You made a mistake. There is no need to get on the defense. Just say, baby, I'm sorry. I love my wife because she always reminds me to apologize. <laughs> I let that simmer a little bit. My wife will remind me to apologize. And it's all good. It's all good. Okay? Consequences. Say it's my bad. Let's move on. If you're working or out, you're going to be late, and you sincerely, you're telling the truth, you're going to be late, or something came up at the last moment, just communicate. And that cuts down a lot of a word that's coming up that I'm going to be talking about. D, drama. Minimize it. If not, eliminate drama in your marriage and relationship. Number one. Keeping people out of your business. Let me say that again. Keeping people out of your business. You're working on keeping the honey on the moon. Get people out of your business. It could be a relative. It could be your partner or a friend that you grew up with, you play basketball with, play football with, play golf with. That's your buddy. You hang in tight. Or it can even be your sister. But someone in your family has a way of dropping that little seed which caused drama. You don't want drama. There's enough going on. For example, when it comes to an important decision to, to be made in the family, the only opinion that matters should be the one of you and your spouse. Be careful to allow others to tell you what to do, how to do it, and be thankful that they suggested the right thing for you to do. Get the drama. Man, get the drama. If anything else you don't get from this workshop, get the drama out of your marriage. It'll save you a lot of time, and you'll be able to have the trophy. I'll leave it like that.
Now, E, exercise. Exercise, that's very, very important. We're talking about the marriage and relationship tips. Take time, men, to work out, exercise, walk, find time to, to meditate, do yoga, whatever it is. You have to be able to supp supplement, supplement the struggles that you go through, supplement some of the challenges that you go through with sound and wholesome and healthy exercise. Spoiler alert, you only got one body. So be able to take care of that body so that you can be able to reap the benefits and the fruits, the, the tr fruits off the tree of your marriage and your family and with your children and everything, that you're going to be able to, to reap the goodness of things. And particularly, there are so many benefits to regularly exercise. I've been blessed. I run it still running. I'm at the age of... <laughs> and I still run every day. And hopefully in pretty good shape. But for you, it may be differently. And I wanted to share that when you're talking about building a healthy marriage and relationship, what needs to be comprised of healthy couples and strong families, spirit, mind, and body, and particularly if you are African-American male, you have been confronted with many things like diabetes, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, prostate cancer is a big issue. You have to take a proactive approach and having a very healthier lifestyle. Watch what you eat. Sometimes it's not what's eating you, it's what you're eating. Let me say that again. It's not what is eating you, it's what you are eating. Take time so you be able to enjoy all the good things in life. You can walk in the park, walk in the lake, uh, outdoors with the kids. Now, you know, with the condition that we have, you have to take precaution with your health. But still, you can still have that quality time and get out and get some fresh air and enjoy yourself. Because what? You want to keep the trophy. Okay? You want to keep the trophy. <laughs> F. Forgiveness. Ooh, ooh, I'm down your street and eating a little bit of your barbecue and drinking a little bit of your Kool-Aid now. Forgiveness. More marriages are faced with divorce, separation, living together as man and wife, and not liking each other or loving each other and don't even talk about the honey on the moon because of forgiveness. Something was said, something was done, maybe it been in the past, maybe something came up, and neither party is willing to forgive one another. Take the high road. Just say, look, I made a mistake. I don't know why something got over me and I bought that car without letting you know. Forgive me. I'll take it back after 30 days. Okay, I'll take it back tomorrow. Forgive me. Or something may happen in the relationship and, uh, you know, life happens, drama happens. When you first get married, all of your old girlfriends, acquaintances, People that you thought that was not attracted to you, that well, now that you're married, they become attracted to you. Then you get into that gray area, and unfortunately, sometimes things happen that you don't want to happen, and it happens. And then when you tell the truth about the situation, and forgiveness is thrown out of the window, and it, like a cancer, starts to eat into your marriage and your relationship. Just, just trying to be real. Forgiveness must be practiced in marriage, relationship, in order for it to flourish. 
is absolutely essential to fulfill the understand the power of forgiveness and forgiving someone who has caused you discomfort, pain. Nobody likes pain. They say no pain, no gain. Nobody likes pain. The pain of going through a situation, the pain of something happened unfortunate in your marriage and neither party wants to forgive one another. So men, I'm telling you today, be bold, be courageous. If you made a mistake, just say, okay, I made a mistake. Please forgive me. And say it wholeheartedly. Don't let your press manager write your statement. Say it from the heart that it can be resonated. And say, forgive me. Leave yesterday behind and find happiness in today and plan for the future. Forgive Ness. That's a whole different workshop when you talk about forgiveness. G. Junior Wine. I always pronounce that differently. It's the name of a singer. I think it's G Wine or Junior Wine. And I, I'm, I was in a workshop one time. Everybody started, started laughing. And he said, You said the singer. We know what word you're trying to say. Unique. Genuine. 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 That's it. <laughs> Genuine. I said, Junior Wine. <laughs> That's a rap star. Nobody's laughing but me. Be genuine. Be yourself. One of the best habits to develop in your life in general, but especially in a marriage and relationship, be for real. Be concerned for one another. And it's like having a diamond. They say diamonds are a woman's best friend. And that's the same thing in marriage. To get to that diamond stage, you're going to go through some heat. You're going to go through some pressure. You're going to go through some situations where it's not all that clean. That diamond is just a piece of coal, dirt. But once you start to put that pressure on it and start to be able to cultivate that coal, clean it up, the heat of the situation, you start to learn together, you start to meld together. And then all of a sudden, you become diamonds. Nothing, the things that used to tick you off don't tick you off anymore. Things you used to say, you don't say anymore. And you move on. And that's when you truly find yourself in that place where you can move on together. You know, as a man, and I'm going to confess this, as a man, and you can tell me yes or no. If my wife said, well, I want a back rub, I'm thinking in my mind, like, yeah, I'm going to get the trophy. <laughs> she just want to have that time, that intimate time of conversation or so, and I have been lacking, trust me, in 32 years, I had to work in those areas because I'm always, what, doing things. And sometimes you don't want to do so many things that you miss the very people that are right in front of you. Before this COVID uh, situation, we spent a lot of time in other people's faces. And the very people that we live with and have those intimate conversations with and eat, we don't have fine time to be in their faces in a positive way. So we have to work on that, men. And we are work in progress, okay? Don't let wedges get in the way. What do you mean by wedges? Let's take a 10 second break. This is live. <laughs> okay, I took a quick 10 second break. I was talking about wedge theory. The wedge theory in a, in a marriage. You see how the smaller things in this wedge, right here, if you notice, small things. Pick up your socks. You didn't tell me that you love me. 
I see on your phone you called all these people and you didn't take the time to call me one minute to ask me how my day was going. What are you doing today? And to us men, that may be little things, just like this wedge, but over a period of time, what happens? It starts to be a big issue. And what you want to do is decline that big issue to where everything is flat. And when doors start to open of opposition in your relationship, when doors of negativity starts to creep in that door, you use your wedge to keep that door of communication open. Remember the wedge, okay? H, honesty. Honesty is still the, the healthiest habit to practice in a marriage and relationship. Principles of honesty, integrity, respect are the pillars of a successful marriage and family. Now, your definition of success may be different than my definition of success in a marriage. But at the end of the day, everyone gets along, everyone's in harmony, everyone loves one another despite of the choices, challenges, and changes that we go through from day to day, and things will happen in life particularly if you have a child with special needs. There are certain thermometers and barometers situation that's going to happen. A thermometer, one thing can happen, and the temperature of the whole room can go. But a barometer, you set that particular tone. And tone is very, very important that we have to watch as men. Because we can say a certain thing and with a certain inflection, and what happens? The wedge is brought back into the marriage. So we have to be very, very careful that we don't allow situations to separate or cause uh, division. I, imagination. Yeah, imagination. We did it. Remember when we were dating? You know how the old people say, y'all courting? Courting? I'm not going to the tennis court. <laughs> you know, I knew what they mean. And the thing was that I never imagined imagination. That gives the, the marriage that uh, sparkle. Do things that your wife would never imagine when you do for Do something differently. And it gives a uh, illustration there's a picture that was given to us when we first got married. It was a silver picture, beautiful picture. One of those pictures they say, hey, I'm gonna pawn this thing, I'll send it back. Where's the receipt? I'm gonna get the money off of this. This is a couple of grand. <laughs> no, I didn't do that. It was given to us as a wedding gift. Beautiful picture. But over time, that beautiful picture, unless we paid attention to it and polish it up, that it was shiny like it was originally given to us, what happened? That silver started to change a different color. And all it was was coating over time, and I say the word neglect. And that beautiful silver started to change. It was exposed to oxygen that it wasn't supposed to be exposed to for a long period of time. Y your marriage can be that silver pitcher, and what happens with the exposure of a lot of oxygen, it changes the color. And remember what I said, you have to be able to keep that atmosphere right the best way. So I say this, be creative so that your love will always be shining like that picture. Being romantic is an acquired practice that blends with the natural ability, talent, and personality. What was the last thing you did romantically for your wife or significant other? What was the last time you did something romantic for them? It may have been a kind word I don't know, but when you infuse that, that kind of lightens the burden of the day. Use your imagination. I always say one of the biggest nations in the world is imagination. You'll be surprised. Be creative. Do different things. 
and they keep the spark going. Now, J, joy. To foster a wonderful attitude so that they always enjoy being around one another, you must acquire a healthy habit of maintaining joy in your life on a daily basis. It reminds me of a story of a mature couple. They have been married for over 50 years. And the husband romantically said to the wife, You know, we've been married for 50 years. And you are tried and true. And as he looked in her eyes and she looked in his eyes, she said, What? And he said it again romantically. And this time he put that little very white voice into it. You know, we've been married for 50 years and you're tried and true. And the wife heard those words and it startled her a little bit. And his wife held a, heal a hearing challenge. And she said, what? That we've been married for 50 years? I know that too. And I'm tired of you. <laughs> so sometimes, in keeping the joy, we have to communicate on the same level that all the words are distinct and all the words are understand. Because sometimes in our hearing, we may communicate things differently with the final result. We want to remain together. So it's very important that you Foster a wonderful attitude of joy. Don't let anybody, that's a song, don't let anybody take your joy away from you. You know, your joy gives you that strength when you have those challenges in your marriage. Married 32 years, I tell you, I faced a lot of challenges financially, raising children, having a child with special needs, times that communicating with my wife, we in the man cave now, so I can share this with you. Sometimes we'd be in an argument and be disagreeable. You stay on your side of the bed, I stay on my side of the bed. No communications. She said, don't even tap me on my shoulder because the last time you tapped me on my shoulder, we wound up having twins at 40. No. <laughs> So those things can happen. You can disagree, but you don't have to be disagreeable. You know, wake up and say, it's a wonderful morning. Make things happen, men. We can do this. It's not that hard. And think about it. If something is broken, it may be brought to your attention. And you're the fixer-upper. Fixer-upper. She's leaning on you to fix up things, leaning on you to help. Yeah, help. You know, it's not like when I used to watch I Love Lucy and I love those shows back in the day where the man came home and said, Lucy, I'm home, honey, I'm home. And he'd come out and have the dinner ready and serve the man and everything and he may have his little cigar or so, kick back in the chair. You know, it doesn't work that way, that way today. It's an honor to serve one another. But you, as a man, go in the marriage saying, I'm going to help. I'm going to be assistant. I'm going to lighten the load. I may not have done it in the past, but Bob said something. Let me get more engaged in this reference to the thing of helping. And you'd be surprised how things will start to open up. You know, I'm not the greatest cook in the world, but sometimes I go in the kitchen and help out and she tell me what to do and not to do. It's hard work. And I let her know that I appreciate it. And if I tell her I don't appreciate it, then she let me know. No trophies. <laughs> okay, nobody's laughing but me. <laughs> okay. Knowing. Listen to this. I'm going to read this word by word. K, okay? Understand the power of knowing the strengths and weaknesses of your spouse. 
realize that he or she may have a greater ability in certain areas where they can utilize best in the marriage. Sometimes, men, we think we know, but we don't know, and that can be a terrible state to be in. Let me say that one more time. Sometimes we think we know, but we don't know, and that can be a terrible state to be in. We, our wives, I read in the Holy Scripture that when we come one, when we get married, we become one. Mother can't call, father can't call, uncle can't call. We are one. You and your wife are one. So in that, you have to be able to know certain things. Together, a solid family builds a solid foundation for the future. No matter how your children may act, if you're together and you're in harmony, it's going to trickle down to them. Trust me. And particularly if you have a child like my wife and I that have special needs, that is a clarity call for us to get closer and closer together. Children are masters of observation, better than what we think. They can observe their parents. They know what buttons to push for the good or for their greater good, they know. They're masters. And they know what to say and what to do. They have both of the parents going at each other and they're sitting back like they're watching ESPN. <laughs> so, the dynamics of you and your wife and the relationship Build upon knowing if I say this particular thing, it's going to spark a pedicaid of a lot of discussion that needs not to be discussed. And in life, everybody has to eat humble pie. So as men, let's get our napkins, let's get our forks, get our knives, and eat humble pie. And at the end of the day, things will be much better. Now, L, this is a good one. L, listen. There's a song in the 60s. I think it was by the Supremes. It says, stop, look, listen to what your heart has to say. Stop, look, listen to your heart and what it says. But there was a lot of gravity in that song. It, it spoke volumes. Sometimes we have to stop in our tracks, look, and listen to what our companion is saying to us men. It's an acquired skill. It really is. It's an acquired skill. Just because a person can hear you talking doesn't mean that they are listening to you. Let me say that again. Just because someone, that you hear somebody talking, doesn't mean that they are listening to you. Give your spouse undivided attention. Wow. I learned my lesson because I was the type of person, just the facts, give me point A, point B, point C, just the facts, ma'am. And my wife would get on me, well, you think I'm on an egg timer. You give everybody else their time, but when it comes down to me, I'm on an egg timer. And we cannot, as men, have more respect for other people, particularly those that do not live in your household. And that particular person is our wives. I'm saying it. You probably stopped the video now. And I know your wife, she'll probably listen to the video and kind of turn it up real loud. <laughs> but once again, we have to be able to give our spouse our undivided attention. 
that is a acquired skill. Giving our wives, our companions, their undivided attention. We cannot think about where we're going, how we're going, what we're going to do, but be in that moment. Trust me. Fellas, I've been there, done it, got the t-shirt. I know. <laughs> Give your spouse that undivided attention. Make them feel more than anything else. Don't do 10 other things at one time when your spouse wants to talk to you. Yeah, I hear you, but I, I know. Let me let me take this one. Let me get this. Let me take this one call here. Yeah, go ahead. I'm listening to you. Go ahead. Go ahead. No. Remember what I told you? The phrase, the page. Honey, how was your day? After you say that, don't say anything else. Listen to what she has to say. Give her your attention. Okay. I didn't want her to hear me say that, but uh, it works. It makes me a better person. As a matter of fact, when she shares things, it enlightens me. It gives me a, a, another dimension of things that I hadn't even thought about. We're working as a team, okay? M, we got that. Stop, look, listen to what your heart has to say, and things will be able to go okay. And do this. Listen to me, fellas. Do not do this. When your wife is talking, do not cut her off. That's another 45 minutes. <laughs> oh, ain't nobody laughing but me. <laughs> do not cut them off, okay? <laughs> Don't do that. That's a no-no. You sit there and you listen. You take it in. You look attentive. Do that, and be sincere when you do it, okay? All right, we're, we're moving on this thing called marriage. <laughs> M is for motivation. Encourage and motivate your spouse. Everybody's gifted. Everybody has a talent. My wife is superior, and I told her this, when it comes to shopping. But for me, to be able to be in that experience, I'm kind of uncomfortable because I'm not tro totally in control. She reads the labels, and it's all for the good of the family. And with me is that, why am I here for 20 minutes and 30 minutes and an hour? I know everybody that comes and goes out of the Walmart in Tallahassee. <laughs> they have a little seat at Publix. Publix is a local uh, shopping center throughout Florida, and some of you guys know about it before this COVID situation. They had seats right in front where the uh, cash register are, and I call that, that's the husband's uh, cage. <laughs> so I would follow my wife around, and she would stop and read the labels, and it's all good. But with me, I become impatient, so I say, well, I'll meet you up front. I was trying to say that's a cold word, like, let's wrap this thing up. But that's her gift. And at the end of the day, she has saved so much money, got good uh, bargains that I could never imagine. Because if I go in the store, I got my list. I ain't going to try to compare it. I know what I want. And I'll spend double the money. And that's the beauty of marriage because you mold and merge her significant talents and your significant talents. And at the end of the day, you flourish and cultivate and encourage one another because you're balancing each other off. You're balancing one talent and another, okay? And particularly when you have to make particular major decisions, that's very important to be able to merge those two talents again, okay? Very good. Let's move on here. In. So we got that about motivation. We got that. 
The beautiful part of marriage is the opportunity to start a new life with your husband and to begin to establish, I mean, a new life with your wife. Okay, I was thinking husband and wife. You know what I'm saying. There's men, new life with your wife. Okay, I'm not going to touch that. <laughs> so in the process of establishing and building a future together, make the time to encourage and say something that would inspire, motivate your spouse or significant other. Okay? You do your thing, I do my thing. I'm not judging you, you don't judge me. And we move forward. All I'm saying is to motivate the one that you with. Okay? The next thing, neatness. And that goes back to organizing. Some have a gift, automatic organizer, which is great. I have a background in the military, so my military side kicks in. I like certain things in order and make sure that everything is in order and helps out. Every little bit helps. I enjoy doing laundry, folding clothes. I had to learn in the beginning of my marriage, I used to throw all the clothes in together. And there were certain intimate garments of my wife that happened without my knowledge that it wound up changing a different color. It went in white and came out a very sexy red and pink. But she didn't get any humor out of that because she wanted to keep the original color. And she said, well, why didn't you separate the white color clothes and the colored, colored clothes? I said, look, I'm not for segregation. I put all of them together. You know, let's get clean together. I'm not going to separate the white clothes and the colored clothes. Let's put them all together. She did not find any humor on most of her at the time that I, I did it. Uh, laundry and earlier in our marriage, you know, coming off being a bachelor, just throw everything in and whatever falls, good to go. Let's keep rolling. But when you come married, you have to be sensitive of the right things to do. Okay, so I learned that early. You know, you got to separate certain clothes so they come out the same color that you want them to come out when you put it in the washing machine and not a different color. I thought, oh, it's fine. Hey, baby, that's sexy. That's a nice pink. She didn't think it was hilarious because the garment was white. <laughs> so learn to work along with another, one another, and neatness is very important. As I said before, the, the lighter that you can lighten the load for your wife, it will reciprocate back to you, man. I'm just saying that heart to heart, man to man. Take time. You don't lose your man card if you got the full clothes. You don't lose your man card if you have an infant child because that's your child too. So learn how to do things out of the norm and you'll be surprised of new things that you can learn. Okay? Oh, this is a, I uh, use O is for opening up. And in the few minutes that we have left for O, opening up means basically now that us as husbands can read our wives' mind and vice versa. It's like if there's an issue or oftentimes other people try to share stuff or get in your business or so, you have to be able to open up men to your wife or your significant other and to communicate and that helps out that O is really big because when you understand the O which means openness then that cuts down all of the drama all the tension all of the things from the outside because you have already communicated what each other have talked about so you don't hear it from somebody else and you always want to go and talk directly to your wife. Talk to her directly because sometimes when you start to pour out your heart and your soul to other people beside your wife, sometimes you go down that rabbit trail that you don't want to go down. So there are certain things where you just be open. 
hey, this is what I'm going through. I, I know I'm a man, but I'm, I went through this. I really don't want to talk right now, okay? Or if I talk, please let me open up and tell you this is how I feel about a situation. Then we can come together from that. P, now, I'm a man of faith. I'm going to share that. See my shirt there, a scream faith. And that's part of uh, being in a marriage and building a relationship. You have to have that uh, scream faith to carry you to the next stage, particularly if you're in a relationship. Now, I'm not going to talk to married people on here. I just want to talk for those that are quote as old folks say, courting. Number one, if this person does not talk to you with respect and dignity and honor and the building of the relationship, what do you think is going to happen once you get married? I can't answer that question for you. But the thing is that you got to be able to pray. Pray. Men, pray too. There are men that go through abusive situations. Let's talk, let's get real. There are some men right now, maybe you watching me right now, has been in an abusive situation in your marriage. And you haven't resolved it. Or you're looking to, hey, I'm not taking this anymore. But it's something that you can first and foremost find your place of peace. Mine is a place of prayer. Do it. And if it's confirmed by situations and actions, and you know in your heart, not your emotions, but in your heart, that it's the right thing to do, then you do it. But I'm talking about building relationships. I'm talking about having a relationship built on brick, not on straw like the three little pigs, and you know that story. But you want your relationship to be built on brick, a solid foundation. When you pray, it renews your inner strength. It gives value. It gives morals. It gives faith, character, integrity. And it's the very fiber and this very delicate blanket that we call love and marriage that is woven together, that woves you together in this thing called marriage. Yeah. So remember that. Questions. Q. Questions. You know, there are times in a marriage that when it's best to just minimize the questions for the sake of the peace in the house. Sometimes it's how, what, when, where, why gets out of hand. And you wind up saying, am I married to you or I'm going through an interrogation? Don't do it, men. And, uh, and don't let it happen to you. Be able to sit down and talk and say, okay, you got one question. I'm going to address that. I'm going to address it in truth. And from that, we will know which direction that we are going on this particular issue. Okay? R, real quick, rest. Take time to rest, men. Take time to rest in your relationship. There's nothing worse than burnout. Because once you get in that burnout situation, then your temperament changes. Your whole mental health starts to change. Things you used to do, you don't do because you're tired. You're burnt out trying to put out fires or, or be able to extinguish old business all sometimes at one time. And most of the time, you get burned out. So the thing is that take the time to not use harsh words and tone and to be able to rest. Rest in your truth and who you are. And be truthful. Rest. And when you rest, you feel better in the morning. You'll be able to say, I'm going to make it. Things going to get better. I do this. When my schedule is really strenuous and seems to be on the tough side, or I'm challenged, 
in a ways that I've never imagined to be challenged before, I say this. I say, God, you know what I'm going through. You know what? Since you're going to be up all night, I'm going to sleep. And if you decide to wake me up in the morning, I just believe everything's going to be all right. And I go to sleep. There are many letters in the alphabet. And we only have a short period of time. And if you like the full publication, feel free to contact me. I hope that what I said would encourage you. R, rest. Just listen. R, rest. S, snuggle. Take out a snuggle with your companion. Just stop everything and just walk in there and just snuggle. And tell her, no, no, I don't want to have sex with you. I just want to snuggle and see what she said. <laughs> trust. Very important. Paramount. Trust. You evade the trust, and that's when it starts to erode in the marriages. I'm not a psychiatrist, okay? I'm not a marriage counselor. But I can share some pages out of my life where I can tell you trust is paramount particularly when you're trying to sustain your marriage. Trust. Trusting in each other. You. Unleash your personality. And what I mean by that is that if you're shy and timid, learn how to do things together with your spouse to kind of bring you out of your timidity. Bring you out of that state of being shy. Or vice versa. If you're very active and doing things, find time to have that peace and quiet with your spouse. Just conversation or watching a show, or take a walk. And I guarantee things will change and it will release your personality. The Bayou, very big, Bayou. Bayou, your wife. Bayou, men, your marriage. Take every opportunity to let your spouse, to know that you are the love of my life. No matter what happened, that song, you can call my name, I will be right there, I'll be there for you. No, ain't no mountain high enough. <laughs> you know the song, you can Google it, but you get my drift. So the more you give affirmation to your spouse, the sweeter the trophy, the sweeter and stronger the marriage. W, waiting. Sometimes you may not have the opportunity or have the time to come to a quick solution. Wait. Say, so let me think on this. And let's get back with one another. You go in your corner, I go in my corner, we come together and we think on these things. X. Wow. I'm going to break this down. The letter X. X is the 24th letter of the modern English alphabet. It was used to locate location on a map. Remember when you, if you ever were in the Boy Scouts, they had a map and they said X is where you are and you got to use your compass, your north, to be able to get to a certain destination. Your X in the marriage is what you plant for the future, your legacy. In African-American history, there were some that could not write their name and the only thing that had a significance to say who they were was the letter X. I think it was a scene in the movie Jane Pittman. If you get an opportunity to watch that movie, and there was a scene where she had wanted to vote it for the first time. She voted for the first time. And she couldn't write that well. Well, she was able, she said, Miss Pittman, put your name there. And she didn't know how to write her name fully. So what she did was she knew that just by putting X to identify who she was, identified where she had come from, identified her legacy and what her essence 
was not only of who what she did in the community and what she did for history, but that X represented the time, the sweat equity to build a family. X marks the spot. Why yawn? Not Y A W N, but Y E A N. And it means that to keep pressing on is an old English word. I yawn for the destiny and treasures of my life. That means to keep pursuing, keep moving forward in your marriage. And the last letter, Z. Old fashioned word, zeal. That means. Nothing as great is ever accomplished without enthusiasm. Let me say that once again. Nothing great is ever accomplished without enthusiasm. Remember when you first saw your spouse. It was just like it caught your eye. It's like, wow, I got to mark up my game. I know I'm married out of my league. My wife is amazing. My wife is tremendous. My wife is creative. My wife can do things that I can never fathom. My individual. My wife is a sustaining force of integrity and love and action. That's my wife. Yeah. And I honor her for being the mother of our children as well. And to put up with me, <laughs> Robert Allen Street in the third <laughs> for over thirty years. <laughs> the trophy goes to her. <laughs> but I'm so thankful. How that zeal, how that thirst and hunger and thirst for righteousness in your family, in your marriage. I hope that this session has encouraged you, inspired you, motivated you, given you hope. I hope that, in all honesty, by watching this video was your last course, looking for encouragement. I hope that something I said or tore off some pages out of my life to encourage you that you can build a strong relationship. You can build a strong marriage because eyes have not seen and ears have not heard of the great rewards that when you have strong families, you have strong home, you have a strong community, and in that community of people that are building families, your state becomes stronger in which you live. And then with your testimony and all the people that are doing the right thing and trying their best to build a strong family, it helps this nation. So I say to you, develop good habits. I only shared 26 from the alphabet, A to Z. If you have any questions, comments, observations, feel free to contact me and I'll be delighted to communicate with you and let's build a community of hope, us men, a community of hope that we can do it, and be honest with yourself. Sometimes we have to take that barometer, and sometimes we have to take that little test of ourselves to see where we honestly stand in our families. It reminds me of a story of a man, he was about to get a divorce. He was at his wit's end. And he felt like giving up. Just say, I can't take it anymore. Known in the community. People kind of lean on him for wisdom and understanding. But things were just wasn't going right in his marriage. And there were times when he had tears in his eyes and become frustrated. And he took an evaluation. And he says, it's not my spouse. It's me. That stand in the need of prayer, stand in the need of knowledge, and stand in the need of giving more of myself to that significant one 
that I stood before God Almighty and exchanged vows to. And at the end of the day, I said, I do. And you know what? That person was me. I know how it is. Sometimes in your marriage, you feel like giving up. I'm packing. I'm gone. I don't care what people say. But there's a time where you have to have reflection and honesty and say, God, I need help. And by my faith, God has restored my marriage, put it in green pastures. And what I've said by that is that it's not the bank account, whether I got a penny or a million. Like Donnie Pardon said, money is fine. I can buy more clothes. <laughs> it beats being in poverty. But at the end of the day, what legacy are you leaving for your children, for your future? So I say to you, brother to brother, brother, mano to mano, man to man, you can do this. You can do this. Building a strong relationship. Building and cultivating a strong marriage. Obstacles will come. Rain will come. But you stand fast. Hold your head up. And you do well. And have a tremendous day. And as I always say, be encouraged because you already won and you are undefeated. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Thank you for participating in the Family Cafe. I hope that what was said would have been an encouragement to you and your family. And with that said, I hope that after all that we're going through, society, that I have opportunity to shake your hand, look you in the eye, and say, you are tremendous. You are a tremendous person. And I thank you for your time. And I thank you. What's the one tip that I share today that you can use in your marriage to have a healthy, nurturing marriage? Have a great day. See you soon. Keep the honey on the moon. <laughs>